Hi, I'm David Shukoff, Director of Education at Manhattan Theatre Club, and welcome to today's segment of MTC Education's online family drama playwriting workshop series. This series is intended for families watching together at home, as well as for individual high school students or teachers watching alone or online with friends or colleagues. Today's topic is dramatic conflict. Conflict is the engine that drives a play. Without it, there is no play. In theater, the term has a particular special meaning. Dramatic conflict arises when this play's central character urgently wants, desperately needs something important, and there are formidable obstacles in the way. Let's explore this idea through a theater game called Yes, No. Uh, something, by the way, that you can easily do with a friend online. So, pair up, and for each pair, decide who's A and who's B. And if there's an uneven number, um, the odd person can initially be the observer. So, A and B are going to improvise a scene. A's dialogue consists exclusively of the word yes, and B's line of dialogue is no. That's all you say. Yes for A, no for B. But each of you can, not only can, but should use your line of dialogue as often as you want. Using only those two lines of dialogue, A's objective, A's need is to persuade or convince B to change from no to yes. And B's objective is to make A earn the yes. Okay, so there can be no physical contact between A and B. Other than that, anything goes. So pause the video, try your yes, no scenes in various cut and configurations. Make sure everyone has a chance. Um, try it out different ways. See what you observe. Um, remember the instructions. If you have trouble uh, recalling the instructions, there are PDFs accompanying this video that you can refer to. Um, when everyone's had a turn, discuss what happened. What did you collectively learn? And then I'll see you back when you're done. Okay, so how'd that go? Did any of the A's succeed in getting the B's to switch? How did that happen? One key point, the secret ingredient in this exercise is the instruction for B to make A earn the yes. That element meant that there was a possibility for change for forward momentum, for psychological movement. In theater, that's vital. Without the possibility of change or transformation, we have a stalemate. The story becomes static and boring. In good plays, actions have consequences. For example, in this case, the B moving to a yes. So again, this idea of characters with needs, desires, wishes, is in a sense the definition of drama. Remember Margaret in Good People from two sessions ago, desperate for a job, or from last week, Anne in the height of the storm, who urgently needed her father to come to terms with his situation. In the attached PDF, there's another activity called neutral dialogue that will enable you to explore further this idea of playing an intention, of having an objective, a need, a want. But let's now watch two clips depicting complex dramatic confl uh, conflicts. They're both from MTC's 2017 production of August Wilson's Jitney, directed by Ruben Santiago Hudson. One dramatizes a family in danger of destroying itself. The other is about a family in formation. For the first, you need a little bit of backstory. And by the way, that's going to be the topic for a future session. Um, the scene is between a son and his father. Booster, the son, a former college honors student, has just been released from prison after serving a 20-year sentence for shooting and killing his white girlfriend who falsely accused him of raping her. Booster has sought out his father, Jim Becker, who runs the gypsy cab station in which the play is set, and who failed to visit Booster throughout his incarceration. In the scene, there's reference to a Mr. Rand, the Becker's former white landlord, before whom Booster, as a young boy, saw his father abasing himself when he couldn't pay the rent. 
So, I suggest you watch the clip two times. It's only about four minutes long. Uh, the first time, just enjoy it. Uh, maybe pay attention to how the actors use the space, referring, referring to last week's session. But the second time, I want you to watch it while using the character profile forms that are attached, that are in the attached PDFs. And in particular, pay attention to the chief wish urgent need line, because that is what's going to shape the dramatic conflict. Okay, th th that would be an easier task to do if you knew the play, I admit. Um, and by the way, it's available for purchase, or you can kind of check it out uh, on Wikipedia. But do your best. In the clip, Booster is played by Brandon J. Durden, and Jim Becker is played by John Douglas Thompson. So watch it, discuss it, and then come on back and I'll introduce the second clip. You want to know why I never came to see you? No, I don't want to know. That's your business. I kept seeing your face at your mother's funeral. How you just stood there and never shed a tear. Stood there with a scowl on your face. And now you want to walk in here and ridicule me because I did not Mr. Rand on his ass. You want to know why? I tell you why. Because I had your black ass crying to be fair. Crying to have a roof over your head. To have clothes to wear to school and lunch money in your pocket. That's why. Because I had a family. I had responsibility. If I had knocked him on his ass, you would have went hungry. You wouldn't have had clothes on your back or a roof over your head. I'd done what I had to do. I swallowed my pride and let them mess over me. All the time saying, you bastards got it coming. Look out, Becker's boy is coming to straighten this shit out. You're not going to fuck over him. He's going to grow big and strong. Watch out for Becker's boy. Becker's taking this ass whipping so his boy can stride through this shit like Daniel in the lion's den. Watch out for Becker's boy. And when I get hurt, you tell me what I get. Tell me what I get. Tell me what I get. What I get, huh? Stay away from me. What I get, huh? What I get. Tell me. I get a murderer. That's what a murderer. Right. And the way your mama loved you, you killed her. You know that. You a double murderer. No, I ain't killer, Pop. You know what that. You call it. That woman took sick the day that judge sentenced you, and she ain't never walked or said another word or ate another thing for 23 days. She just laid up in that room until she died. Now you tell me that ain't killing her. Tell me that ain't killing her. Every day, Mama came in that courtroom by herself. Where was you? Anybody could see how it was wearing her down. Where was you when she needed somebody to hold her hand when she needed a shoulder to cry on? Somebody to talk to? Where were you? Not for me. But for her, the woman you love, when she fainted in that courtroom, I tried to get to her, but I had six deputies holding me back. What was holding you? Where was you them two or three days when she was dying? I was trying to keep her alive, trying to get her to eat something, trying it to get her to- It wasn't about eating, Pop! That's not what she needed. A bowl of soup. She needed to know that you was there for her. That you would be there for her when she got up. That she could count on you to support her, but you turned your back, clinging to your roof. Don't you say nothing to me about turning my back. What you call it? I was there. I was holding her hand when she died. Where were you? Locked up in a cage like some animal. That's what killed her. To hear the judge say that the life that she brought into the world was unfit to live. That you be remanded to the custody of a commissioner of corrections at Western State Penitentiary. And there to be executed in the electric chair. This order to be carried out 30 days from today. Ain't that what the judge said? Ain't that what she heard? This order to be carried out 30 days from today. That's what killed her. She didn't want to live them 30 days. She didn't want to be alive to hear on the 11 o'clock news that they had killed you. So don't you say nothing to me about turning my back when I nursed that woman, talked to her, held her hand, prayed over her, and the last words to come out of her mouth was your name. I was there. Where were you? Mr. Murderer, Mr. Unfit to Live Among Society, where were you when your mama was dying and calling your name? You 
for my son. I helped to bring you into this world. But from this moment on, I'm calling the deal off. You ain't nothing to me, boy. You just another nigger on the street. Our second clip from the same production depicts a young couple striving to make a life and create a family. A young woman, Rena, has been troubled by the recent secretive behavior and unexplained absences of Darnell, her longtime live-in boyfriend and father of their son, Jesse, especially because the food money has gone missing and Darnell has been seen driving around town with Rena's sister, Peaches. In this clip, Cara Patterson plays Rena, and Andre Holland plays Darnell, also known as Youngblood. So, same procedures, watch the clip twice, second time, use the character profiles tool, and then come on back for your first actual playwriting challenge. A house? A house, Darnell? You bought a house without me? I wanted to surprise you. You gonna surprise me with a house? <laughs> Don't do that. A new TV, maybe. <laughs> a stereo, a couch, a refrigerator. Okay, but don't surprise me with a house I ain't even had a chance to pick out. That's what you've been doing? That's the debt you had to pay? You always saying you don't want to live your whole life in the project. Darnell, you ain't bought no house without me. How many times in your life do you get to pick out a house? Oh, no, no, wait, 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 wait till you see it. That's real nice. It's all on one floor. It's got a, a, a basement, like a little den. We can put the TV down there. She told myself Rena gonna like this. Wait till she see I bought her a house. No, you bought a den for Darnell. That's what you did. <laughs> so you can sit down there and watch your football game. But what about the kitchen? The bathroom? How many windows does it have in the bedroom? Is that some place for Jesse to play? How much closet space does it have? You can't just surprise me with a house and I'm supposed to say, oh, Darnell, that's nice. At one time I would have, but I'm not 17 no more. I have responsibilities. I want to know if they have a hookup for a wash and dryer because I got to wash Jesse clothes. I want to know if it have a yard and do it have a fence and how far Jesse has to go to school. I ain't thinking about where to put the TV. That's not what's important to me. And you're supposed to know, Darnell. You're supposed to know what's important to me like I'm supposed to know what's important to you. I'm not asking you to do it by yourself. I'm here with you. We in this together. See, house or no house, we still ain't got the food money. But if you had come and told me, if you had shared that with me, we could have went to my mother. We could have got the $80 for the house and still had money for food. You just did it all wrong, Darnell. I mean, you did the right thing, but you did it wrong. <laughs> no matter what I do, it's going to come out wrong with you. That's why you jumped to conclusions. That's why you accused me of running around with peaches. You can't look and see that I quit going to parties all the time. Did I quit running with Babe, bro, and Earl? Did I quit chasing women? You, you just look at me and see the old Darnell. Now, if you can't change the way you look at me, I may as well surrender now. I can't beat your memory of who I was if you can't see I changed. Now, I go out here and I work like a dog to try and do something nice for you, but no matter what I do, I can't never do it right because all you see is the way I used to be. You don't see the new Darnell. You don't see I've changed. I know people change, but I know they can slip back too. No! Rena, people believe what they want to believe. What they set up in their mind to believe. Now, I know what it looked like when I was gone all the time and not bringing home no money, but you could have noticed that I was tired. You could have said, you know, Darnell ain't talking too much because he's tired. You could have noticed that I didn't act like somebody running the streets. That I ain't come home smelling like alcohol and perfume that I didn't dress like somebody running the streets. If you had thought it, 
all the way through. You would have noticed how excited I was when I got that UPS job, how I asked you if I could take it. You would have noticed how I've been planning things. I wasn't running around here drinking beer and, and, and playing cards. How I get up early on Sunday and go out to the airport to try to make a few extra dollars before the jitney station over, but you ain't seen all that. Are oh, you still working off your memory, but the past is over and done with. I'm thinking about your future. She ain't the only one to think about Jesse. That's why I'm trying to do something different. That's why I'm trying to buy a house. Now, maybe I should have told you about the house. Well, maybe I did do it all wrong. But I've done it. Try to show you I love you. What I get for it. Okay, and we're back. Uh, I hope those two scenes provoke some rich discussion. Uh, what did you come up with for the chief wish urgent need lines for each of the four characters? And did you notice in the second clip in particular how there was a possibility for psychological movement, for change? Again, that's the essence of drama. Strong need, obstacle, and the possibility for transformation. That's what theater is all about. So, now for the challenge. Um, I'd like you, with, alone or with a partner, to write a scene inspired by one of the two you just watched. Your choice. Um, if you're ambitious, you could write two, one based on each. So here are the two topics. And by the way, these are also in your PDFs. So topic one, a scene between an adult child and a parent. One has done something in the past in the past that has so outraged the other that they have been estranged ever since. What was it and who did it? One of them shows up unexpectedly. What happens? Okay, that's topic one. Topic two, a scene between a young couple. One has done something well-intentioned but so rash that it distresses the other one and threatens the relationship. What was it? Before you start writing, create character profiles for each of your characters um, using the forms you used before. What are they trying to accomplish in the scene? What are their chief wishes, their urgent needs? What, what's their goal? By answering that question, those for each of the two characters, you'll know what they're going to say in the scene. Decide where the scene is set. Maybe you want to use the living room set that we came up with in our last session, or come up with one of your own. Um, try, as you're writing, to visualize the way the characters move around the set and um, indicate that with uh, some of that movement with stage directions. And that's a topic we'll come up, we'll, we'll deal with later. In fact, what you might want to do is start out by improvising the scene. Or maybe cast the scene, maybe, for example, one of you plays the parent, the other the adult child. Let's say the adult child who's been gone for 20 years knocks on the door unexpectedly. Who speaks? What's said? And you're off. Um, make sure when you're writing the scene that you're giving both characters an opportunity to express their respective points of view, to justify their actions, to make their case. And um, you might consider starting the scene off with a zingy opening line, the way we explored two sessions ago. Think, for example, of Rena's line, um, a house? A house, Darnell? You bought a house without me? So, good luck. I can't wait to see what you come up with um, when you're finished or when you've gone as far as you can. Post your scene to the your family drama folder. And of course, share it with us by posting it to your Instagram, tagging us at mtc underscore NYC, or email it to us at ed at mtc-nyc.org. Uh, so again, good luck. Can't wait to see what you what you come up with, and uh, see you next time.